what you're looking at here is a few of the remaining pieces of an oak armoire that we cut up out of Teresa's dad's house. And uh, I think it's time that we turn these into some kind of usable junk. Is there anything good left in that old stick there? Let's have a look. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. So, before we get started on the saw, we have to look out for things like this. Staples in there. And in, uh, and in this little beast, nails. Those are going to be no fun on your saw. No fun on your planer for sure. What's up next is a little wood glue on all of these seams between each one of these. And those will get all squashed together in here. So, here we go. Round two. Got these guys in the clamps. Got these guys out of the clamps. Not looking too bad. They're going to, of course, need to go through the planer again. Man, how nice to have a power planer. Used to do all this by hand or with my hand plane or sandpaper. So oak, cedar, poplar, cedar, poplar, oak. So good morning. A new day begins. And uh, these are the four panels that we made up yesterday. So the idea is they'll go something like this. These will all be dovetailed and make a nice little tool chest out of that. Now what I need to do is figure out the base, the bottom piece, and hopefully I can laminate it out of all of those. And then likewise, a uh, lid for it, also laminated out of all this scrap laying around here. We'll see how that goes. So, if I can clean up these edges on here, I have to do that one as well, then the idea is these will sort of drop in here, and that might be the top or the bottom. Well, here's a score. I found these uh, kind of rasty looking five quarter cedar deck boards at my son-in-law's backyard. And Richie gladly gave them up. And I think those are going to end up being the trim for the toolbox. We'll see how it goes. And uh, a little bit of sunshine out there got me out on the planer. So I got the front, back, and sides all planed up and cut square. And the top and the bottom are planed down finely. And uh, they look pretty good. I think that's going to be the top on top. And the bottom down there. The trick here is just to make sure that when you're cutting, you're always cutting on the waist side of the line, not on the, save, the side of the line you're going to try to save. So you want to make sure you're on the waist side of the line. I have my thumb sitting in there just to kind of rest the saw against it till it gets a little bit of a groove of its own. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, when you're dealing with the rest of the world and you just want to be down here cutting dovetails, it's pretty nice to get down here and just hit that little chisel a little bit. After that number one panel is cut, it's just a matter of laying the number one panel on the other number one. This is the one one corner here and uh, lining that out. Ideally, if you put your pencil where you want your line to be, then put your square on there and draw your line, your line is exactly where you want it to be. Then, once I get that done, I want to make sure that I know that I'm cutting out these pieces right here. This is kind of the place where things can get a little goofy you could conceivably 
make a mistake and have to start all over. One of the things I try to do with the glue up is not go so crazy on the glue that I got a lots and lots of cleanup to do. So, that's the uh, initial glue up. That big monstrosity of clamps and squares and whatnot. Yeah, well, the work goes on. These little uh, cedar slabs right here, these are gonna be the uh, sides of the till. That's the little kind of drawer that fits down inside of the, of the tool case. Well, good morning. It's another beautiful day. Uh, next up on the list is uh, I'm going to sand down the inside of this box while I have it open like this. That makes it a lot easier to get the sander moving around. And one of the things that are going to happen is when the top folds down around here, I'm going to want a little bit of a relief around this top edge uh, to just make it a little easier for that for that shoebox type lid to slip down over the top of that when it hinges down over it. So what I have to do is uh, kind of figure out where the top piece of the trim is going to be. And I'm going to use about 3 eighths of an inch. And then along here I'll have a line drawn and then I'll also make a little line around the outside of this guy like that and uh, all the way around and what I'll want to do is I'll want to bevel those down just a little bit and I might use my hand planer to start with I think that's what I'll use then eventually I'll hit it with my sander a little bit so that's what's going on next so what we got here is a little homemade jig with a quarter inch rabbiting bit in it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little notch right on the inside of here so that about that much of these is cut out and then the bottom piece will fit into there. And then you'll be able to see that this little guy will drop down in there. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Well, I saved you a whole bunch of sanding and sawing. Basically, this is that bottom piece after we've cut these notches in here, this little rabbit in here. Uh, I cut this guy to width and then to length and then uh, choked through a whole bunch of sanding and the idea, it's gonna fit right in there. Now the rabbit uh, router bit cuts a little round over in here so I could square that off but I find it's much easier to just use this and round off the ends of these boards with my little flat pole saw. So if I do that on each of those corners then that baby should just drop right in there. We'll see. And uh, watch this. Ooh la la la. Today I'm trying to cut this trim, so I start here and to make 45s all the way around and end up with a little piece over on this side. Then we're left with just dropping a little mark on the back side here. And when I get that mark, then I lay my little 45er right up on the top of this guy. And, uh, bam. And that's the cut I'm looking for right there. Here's a look at our handiwork for the day. I can always use more clamps, I suppose, huh? Now that's the bottom trim and the upper trim all on, 45 glued and clamped. Well, good morning, another day. So, uh, I've got this trim, the bottom trim and this top trim all glued on last night. And that came out pretty nice. Now this morning I'm cutting 45s on what's going to be the box top. And you can see that I have those all ready to go. And the last one is just about ready to be cut over here. What we have to do with that is 
I have to leave a little bit of space in here and make these a little bit wider than the slot that they fit down on so that they fold down on there nicely once the hinges are on and then uh, eventually this panel right here will be placed inside there and I'll cut a groove, I'll cut a little dado all the way along here on my table saw and uh, boom, that's where we are so far. Fun! Look at that beauty. That's the fit right there. Now I've got to take this all apart and glue these on and get them in some clamps and keep them nice and square. But that's a, going to be a really nice, tight, solid fit. The next phase of our operation, these are going to be the sides of the till. Uh, step number next, I got the top all glued up and there's a little tab on here to put the chain on it so I can put a little screw in there. And uh, I made the top a little bit bigger so that there's room for it to slide down around the, the uh, inside of that box lid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to center it up a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, back and forth this way until I have it just about the same. And uh, what I need to do is I need to just shave down a little bit on both sides of these. And so I need to just get my planer and uh, hand plane that down a little bit on that side as well as on that side. We'll take those down a little bit and then it'll fit nice and snug on the outside but there'll be a little bit of room on the in for it, inside for it to slide down on there. There you go. Nice and, nice and smooth, nice even fit. We'll clean up this little knot a little bit. Okay, here goes nothing. I've uh, I got this little branding iron and it's kind of cool because it will put your little brand on there. But I got to tell you, I've had mixed results with it lately. So no telling what's going to happen right here. Now, I kind of just want to hold it in place and get a good burn on there. I can smell it burning a little bit. What do you think? Take a look. Yeah, baby. Okay, success. Well, no complaints about that. This is the little divider that will go in right here. So now what I need to do is just plane that off a little bit on the top side there. And then I'll get that glued in and get a clamp on it. And so hopefully once that all dries uh, later tonight, tomorrow, this will kind of be ready to get its final sanding. Well, this is kind of a fun stage of the project. Uh, putting on the hardware. Hey, there you go. Next up, a little boiled linseed oil. And uh, the idea with that is it's just going to really help to bring out the grain in all the wood. So, kind of a, a kind of a fun part of the project here. And that is to uh, begin to personalize the tool chest with uh, a little bit of a nameplate for our buddy Walker, who's uh, going to be helping us with the electricity stuff up at our bathhouse rebuild. This guy's kind of fun. It's called a strap cutter. And it allows us you know, make a pretty nice, pretty nice clean line along the top and bottom there. Well, that came out right. Next thing we're going to do is just do a little trim around the edges here. Soften those up a little bit. Good. Then, a little bit of this. This stuff's called gum trag. There's a big old giant name but people just call it gum trag because they can't pronounce that very well. And what that does is puts a little moisture, a little uh, gel into this edge and after you put that on the edge you use your burnishing tool 
to go along the edge and it kind of puts a nice hard seal where normally it would just be the end grain of the leather there. So that looks a little bit better, right? So it's not quite done. This is a little uh, olive oil and beeswax mix that I kind of make up myself in the kitchen. There you go. What do you think? So there you go. Okay, now we're cooking. Time to get a little coat of polyurethane on there. And uh, the idea is that first coat just wants to be really, really light. Uh, the combination of having that linseed oil still in the wood and a super light coat will uh, allow it to dry a little bit. Uh, if I put on too heavy a coat, it, I think the linseed oil in there is still making some problems for me. Well, let's have a look. That's the till. And uh, here's the main tool chest with its first coat of poly on. Doing just a little bit of fine tuning here. And uh, just to make it close a little bit easier, I'm trying to bevel down the inside lip here. Oh yeah, very nice. That's a little uh, 1200 grit sandpaper on there. And uh, on this back side is a little bit of leather for a strop. And uh, part of the whole thing of uh, making your chisels work perfect is having them extra, extra sharp. Always be careful about stuff like this. I got my chisel running the same direction of where my finger is, so I don't want my hand up here at all. Okay. Yeah. So much nicer. This little beveled edge here meeting this little uh, contrary beveled edge right there. And now when it closes, ta-da! Well, good morning. Now several days have passed since you've seen this and uh, it's been sitting in the house getting nice and dry and getting a real nice hard finish on this polyurethane. And so the next step is some simple steel wool and just running over all of the surfaces with this steel wool and it just knocks down the little imperfections in the finish. You don't want to go too crazy, just a little bit. So next up on the uh, fun parade are uh, putting these nifty little handles on there. So these are going to go right about here. And uh, they're black, they kind of kind of match the hinges a little bit. So I'm doing the, doing the layout for those. And uh, I center up on there, and I think I just about have my spots picked. Well, I think that's just about it. Got the handles on. Going to put that little leather piece right here. Everything's looking pretty good. Got the name tag on, and uh, that's it, final phase.